Hello. After many attempts, I've successfully been able to decompile Minecraft's 1.7.2. I've used a lot of online videos, and there's been a lot of great ones, but I thought I'd take a moment and just make my own and address some of the questions I had along the way um, that I didn't get a direct answer for. So the first thing to note is over here on the left-hand side, I have this Word document, and really roughly, these are the steps I'm going to go through. I'm going to download Minecraft Code Pack 903, um, I'm going to set up um, a folder on my desktop. You can do this anywhere, but I'm going to do it from my desktop because that's just where I'm going to keep all my code. If you don't have Java, we're going to do a Java download and install. I'm not actually going to do that in this video. I'm just going to show you where to find that. I'm happy to, to, to do that in another video. We're going to do an Eclipse download. Um, again, I'm not actually going to do this in this video. I'm going to show you where to get Eclipse from and download, download it and open it. Then in your MCP folder, you run decompile. And what decompile does is it basically will go out and find your Minecraft code and it will decompile it and then set it up in a new location for you. And what you'll end up with is um, all the, the Java files that are needed to run it. Then what, we're, then what you'll do is you'll open up Eclipse and then you're going to make a new workspace that's going to point um, or use the Eclipse directory that's actually in your MC, MCP folder. And if all goes to plan, you should end up with something that looks like this. And again, one thing I've noticed a lot of videos didn't do is it didn't say, and you should be able to run the start.java, and if it's all worked, Minecraft should come up. And there it is. Um, so, this is Minecraft 1.7.2. So the first question that I had actually when I was doing all this was, um, a Minecraft, you know, has this loader, and I got a little confused about about does this work okay with the loader? Because I found a lot of examples of how to do this with really early versions of Minecraft that didn't have the loader on it. So I don't know if this is completely correct, but I, I'm pretty sure what you need to make sure you do is if you go into your edit your profile, um, make sure you set your release to the version that you want. And make sure you've played it at least once, because when you, you go to this release version and then I play it, um, it actually downloads that release version. And if you, again, if you navigate to your, to your app data location, so here's our Minecraft, you'll see you have versions. And these are the versions I've actually run on my computer. So it'll actually go and find the version that, that it needs in this case. Okay, so like I said, make sure you actually set your version, open up Minecraft, and run it at least once so you've downloaded those appropriate things. That's all you really need to do for this example of how to decompile. So let's close that right up. All right, so I have a couple tabs here that I have open. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find the Mi Minecraft Code Pack. Um, so if you do a Google search for Minecraft Code Pack 903, it should be your first link. Um, and then you come down here, you can either go to this gentleman's Twitter feed or you can um, download directly from this zip. So if I click here, there's my MCP download and I can download that. Okay, so you're going to download that and then you're going to extract it. So let's just do that here. Let's resize this a little bit. Now I've already done that. So what I'm going to do now is before I actually go any further, I'm just going to actually show my desktop. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a folder on my desktop and we're going to call this MCP um, 1.7 Point two video demo. So let's drag this up here so we can all see it. So here it is. So this is the folder I'm going to use. So now that I've actually downloaded this MCP, I'm going to double click it and I can just I'll close that. I can just select everything. So I'm going to select everything in here. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it right in here. This is exactly the same as if I decompile, I'm sorry, if I um, exported it in here, so extracted it, sorry not exported, extracted into here, and so now I'm set up there and that's good. Okay, so I'm going to show you where to get these things, but I'm not actually going to do this right now. If you don't have Java, if you do a Java JDK download, you'll usually get one of, you know, this will be your top hit, and I come into Java SE development. Um, we're going to download Java 7. Now note Java 8 is out now, um, I haven't installed Java 8 in my computer. I imagine it probably will work with Java 8, but 
I'm doing this with Java 7. So just in case you have Java 8 on your computer and it doesn't work for some reason, maybe a step is to go and download Java 7. So you're going to accept a license agreement and you're going to pick either, either the 32-bit or the 64-bit depending on what machine you're running. Okay, So you download that, run that, and it'll take a while to install. The other thing you're going to need is Eclipse. So again, if you just do a Google search for Eclipse download and click on the first one, um, you're going to download either 32-bit or 64-bit. Now you're going to notice when you go on to different people's videos, they're going to open up Eclipse and you'll see some people have Kepler, some people will have Juno, these different versions of Eclipse. It actually doesn't matter for us. Those are just the different, again, versions of Eclipse that are out there. Um, for the most part, it won't matter which one you have. Okay, so you're going to download this and again extract it and install it. And I do have a video showing how to do this, but I'll make another one if uh, people are really interested in that. Okay, so where you should be at this point is you should be at a point where you've downloaded this MCP and you basically have your folder here with all this stuff here. Okay? So, and before I go any further, I'm just going to close my Eclipse there. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do now is it's really simple. I just come in here and I run this decompile. And what this decompile does is it actually goes out, it will find your Minecraft on your computer, you don't have to do anything, and it will take the code and it will decompile it, and it's going to put everything into my Eclipse folder here. And it's all going to be set to go. So I'm just going to double click here, and I'm just going to run this decompile. It's going to take a while. Um, and again, depending on the version of MCP you have and the version of Minecraft you're running, you could run into some errors. So it's really important you, you make note of, of um, the versions that you're running. Um, a number of times, this, this was the first one I got working, and I remember getting really excited because it finally decompiled without errors. Um, so just be aware of that and watch the end. Another thing is this Scalac not found in path, that's, don't worry about that. That doesn't seem to cause a problem. Um, and this will take a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video and I'll come back when this is all decompiled. Okay, so my decompile is done. Um, again, you can go up through here and look. The first number of times I tried to decompile using a number of different um, MCP versions, I got some weird errors in here. I remember when this worked for the first time, I was rather excited. Um, I do have this missing server jar file aborting. What I the reading I have done on this is not to worry about this, um, provided you're not pl planning on doing some server-side kind of modding. Um, yeah, we'll deal with that problem if we ever come to it. So I'm going to press any key. And what you'll notice now is if you click into Eclipse, you should have a folder called Client and a folder called Server. This holds all your code for the client. This holds all your code for the server. And again, that's a very simplified explanation of what's actually happening. Now there's all sorts of code in here um, that we can eventually get at. The best way to actually kind of get at this code is we want to open it in Eclipse. Eclipse is an amazing tool because what it allows you to do is um, modify, execute, um, and it actually helps you, helps you by completing a lot of the method calls that you want to make. So the last step we're going to do is we're going to open up Eclipse Here's Eclipse. Notice I have Kepler again. You might have Juno. You might have Indigo. Um, doesn't matter. Um, you're going to have this pop up. So here we go. And we're going to, this is not, this is a different version. This is a version um, that I first got running. So again, it's important to note that this workspace points to this MCP down here. This is another time I tried. So I can, I can decompile it. Um, play with the code, and if I want to decompile it again, I can do that, and I have a completely separate set of decompiled code to work with. So this, I'm working with the video demo one here. So what I'm going to do is go into Eclipse, File, I'm going to switch workspace, and I'm going to click Other, and now I'm going to browse, go to my desktop, MCP 1.7.2 video demo, expand that, and I'm going to click on the Eclipse folder. That's it. Click on Eclipse, that's where you want to be because you need this metadata folder and various information that's buried inside this fold Eclipse folder here. Click OK, click OK, Eclipse will shut down and then restart, opening up that workspace. And now, I feel good about this so far because I don't have any 
errors in the client as of yet. So I'm going to expand all this. I'm going to look specifically at the default. I'm going to click on the start. So for those of you that are experienced Java programmers, you know we always look for the main method. There it is. Um, and I'm going to hit run. And there you go. Minecraft 1.7.2. Notice no loaded games. So let's take a really quick second, a moment or two. We'll do this in another video and just do a quick overview of how this is set up. So these are your various packages, and there are, there are thousands of classes that, that allow this game to, to run. And they've grouped the classes into packages. So this package here, for example, contains all the blocks in the game. So if I click and expand this, these are the classes or blueprints we can think of them that describe the blocks in the game. So you see there's a whole bunch here. Okay. Um, the other one that's kind of easy to start playing with when you first, you know, as you start to explore this is the entity um, packages because they contain the various entities in the game and entities are monsters, um, cows, pigs, all those different things. So let's start by looking at the passive entities. So I'm going to expand this and here is my um, chicken entity. So this is this is the class that defines chickens. So if you see a chicken in the game, this is a class that helps define how a chicken behaves and acts, um, what happens when, when it gets hurt. So we see here this method describes what happens when the chicken gets hurt. It returns a mob.chicken.hurt, which I'm pretty sure is, is the sound that it makes. The death sound for the chicken is right here. Um, play sound. The one thing I've noticed is that, you know, I've tried decompiling some earlier versions of Minecraft 1.6 and their functions um, are named a little in a, in a clear manner, but I've noticed now with 1.7.2 um, is that a lot of their functions now have gone to number, being numbered. So you don't necessarily know what they are. Um, but here, for example, this is one we can clearly see what it does drop a few items. So this is a method that I imagine is called when the chicken gets killed. So, you know, this dot, so function 145779 underscore A is a method that essentially drops an item. So if I want my, my chickens in my game to always drop diamonds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, this dot func, and again, I have to get that number right, underscore one four, five, seven, seven, nine, underscore A. And then item dot diamond. And let's drop 10 diamonds. Okay. Oh, items. Now, if you're, if you're in my programming class, you're probably sick of me really enforcing these rules, such as your classes are always capitalized, your methods are always spelled with lowercase. But notice, this is a significant programming project, and they followed those same conventions, and that allows me to very quickly um, guess. You know, I haven't done any looking up, but I know I've recognized that items is a class, and items.feather, I imagine, accesses the feather objects in the game. So if I want diamonds, I go items.diamonds. So let's save all these. Let's start this up. Let's run this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this now. I'm going to, ah, let's just go right through. We're going to create a new world. We're going to call it New World. Um, let's do Creative just so we can go through this quickly. Um, cheats are on. Great New World. We'll have this load. It's going to take a minute. And I'm going to pause this while this world gets started up and I go and find a chicken. Okay, I found a chicken. And if this all has worked, we should be able to kill the chicken, and look at that. There are my 10 diamonds. Anyways, I hope this video helped. Um, I really think you can learn a lot of cool things doing this. I am going to recommend, though, if you're really keen to do some Minecraft mods, um, start with learning the basics of Java. Um, it really is going to make a huge difference in your ability to kind of get in here and modify the code and play around with stuff. I hope that helped. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to post them.